be the glory for the great and mighty things he continues to do in the lives of his people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just want you to know this morning, all is not lost. Oh, Lord. God is still on the throne. Amen. He is still in charge. He is the overseer of all things. Amen. Nothing has slipped from his recognition. He is to be praised this morning and to be glorified. I pray that you are excited about God because God has been so kind and gracious to you. And if you know God has been good and kind and gracious to you, you ought to say amen this morning. Amen. Amen. He woke us up. Started us on a way, giving us a new day. You have your Bible with you this morning. Turn with me to the Old Testament book of Exodus chapter 6. We're going to begin reading with verse 6. Exodus chapter 6, verse 6. Therefore say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. I will rescue you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you as my people and I will be your God. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God who brings you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. And I will bring you into the land which I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I will give it to you as an heritage. I am the Lord. I want to use for a subject this morning, from verse 6, God still rescues. God still rescues. Yes, he does. Let us pray. God, we are here because of you. We give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise, which is due unto thee. For you are a righteous and holy God. Pray, God, that I would now consecrate thy servant, thy word, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. Now glorify your name in this place. The word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. God still rescues. A rescue is something that somebody else does for you. If you're trapped in a fire, you have a heart attack, you call 911 because you need someone else to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. Yeah. Calling 911 doesn't save you. It's the fireman who saves you. It's the paramedic that saves you. Calling 911 puts you in touch with somebody who has the ability to save you. The one who answers your call is the one who saves you. That's important for us to know this morning. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and he will save you. Uh -huh. Acts 16 and 31, saved is another way of saying rescued. Uh -huh. Some people have the idea 
that believing is something we do to save ourselves. But if you're able to save yourself, then by definition you do not need to be rescued. Hello. Believing is calling 911. It is the way that you call on the Lord Jesus Christ. It is Christ who saves you. Mm -hmm. According to Romans 10 and 13, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Yeah. Deliverance. In the Bible is the acts of God whereby he rescues his people from peril. We find here in the Old Testament Deliverance is focused primarily on God's removal of those who are in the midst of trouble or danger. Mm -hmm. In this text here, God is defined as the deliverer of Israel who rescues his people. Not because they deserve to be rescued, but as an expression of his mercy and his love. God did not save us because we deserve to be saved. He saved us because his love for us is so great. Yeah. For the Bible tells us God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Today, you should understand it doesn't matter what you're going through. When the Lord has spoken, he will watch over his word and bring it to pass. Yeah. That's good news for us this morning. Yeah. When God speaks his word, it will not return to him void. Amen. Lamentations 2 and 17 tells me the Lord has done what he planned. He has done what he said he would do Long ago, in other words, God keeps his word. Mm -hmm. Every victory turn around in life begins with a word of rescue from the law. Yeah. God now tells Moses to put aside his broken spirit and feelings of inadequacy and return to the people. Seven times in these three verses, God says, I will. Knowing this, God has heard your groaning as well. He is not oblivious to your situation. He feels your pain, sees your tears, cares about your challenges. The Bible says God remembers his covenant towards the Israelites and he remembers his promises for you as well when God assured Moses that he heard the cries of the Israelites the Hebrew word here for heard means to be granted in other words God not only hears your petition but he wants to grant you the breakthrough you need as you hold on to his promises yeah. God still rescued this morning. Amen. No matter where you are or what you're facing, as we look at our nation today, God is still in the rescuing business. And I do believe God has a plan for this day. God has a purpose for this hour. Yeah. The Israelites were in slavery in Egypt desperate need of a breakthrough perhaps you can relate don't know what you're up against this morning maybe some addiction maybe some habit that you can't get rid of maybe some fear that you have maybe there is hopelessness in your life but I want you to know this morning that God still rescues all you need to do is call on the name of the Lord. Yeah. And he promised to bring you out. Mm -hmm. No matter what you're facing. The gospel message. Is basically a story of divine rescue. 
as God considered the plight of his rebellious people, he determined to save them from their sins. This determination was based on his love. The Bible tells us that before time began, God had already foreordained. Uh -huh. God had predestined his great love and his act of love. Yeah. And what was that great act of love? The Bible says that he became a man and took upon himself flesh uh -huh. and humbled himself mm -hmm. and lived 33 years. What was the purpose of Christ right. coming to this world? His purpose was to rescue you from sin, to rescue me from sin, to rescue you from your bad habits, mm -hmm. to rescue me from my bad habits, mm -hmm. to help us with our shortcomings, to help us when we fall, to help us when we stumble and mess up. Yeah. God is still a God who rescues. Amen. How do I know? Because the Bible tells me that Peter denied him three times. Uh -huh. But I'm glad in that 21st chapter of the Gospel of John, I find Jesus having an encounter with John. Uh -huh. This is what he told John to write. He said, John, write it down. Make sure that the people understand that I did have another follow-up conversation with Peter. And I asked Peter, do you love me? Three times, and Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. But on those occasions, God had set, and God had now initiated his rescue plan for Peter. Mm -hmm. And if he rescued Peter, he can rescue you. Yeah. Told Peter, go with the disciples and wait in the upper room and as you wait I will give you power uh -huh. I'm talking about God's power to rescue Jim just didn't start there but Peter had asked Jesus if I can come to you on the water allow me to walk to you on the water yeah. Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and began to sink but I'm glad that Jesus still rescues. Yeah. Because Peter began to sink. Mm -hmm. Somebody is sinking right now. Mm -hmm. Somebody is about to go under right now. Mm -hmm. But all you have to do is pray this simple prayer. Say so. Mm -hmm. Say so. Yeah. Lord, save me. Mm -hmm. And the moment you pray it, God will reach down his mighty hand and pull you up yes, sir. Mm -hmm. out of your situation. Mm -hmm. yes. Listen to the Apostle Paul's words in his letter to Romans, which is one of my favorite verses, but it speaks to God's power and purpose for rescuing you and I from the slavery of sin. Paul says, you see, at just the right time, I don't know when you got saved, but I remember when I got saved, it was just at the right time. When we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man. Though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrated his own love for us in this while we were still sinners. Christ died for us while you were still going under. Jesus was on his way. History says he made his way through 42 generations. Why? To save a wretch like me uh -huh. and to save one like you. Uh -huh. God demonstrates his love. God fulfills his promises to the Israelites. And he will do the same for you. Yeah. Every promise will come to pass as you choose to put your trust in the Lord. This morning, Hold on to God's word today. Yeah. Believe his promises. Yeah. Follow his instructions. When you do, you will see supernatural breakthrough manifested in your life. Don't know about you, but I've needed God to rescue me from a lot of my own mess. <laughs> a lot of my own hiccups. A lot of my own throw-ups, if you will. Uh -huh. But I stand here this morning 
to the God in you, God will throw out the lifeline of grace. Yes. He'll pull you in by his mercy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he'll surround you and draw you off with his love. Wow. You need to allow him to rescue you this morning. For he still rescues. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on him this morning. No matter how dark the night has been. Yeah. A new day is at hand. I declare a new season in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. I want you to notice in these three verses. Three things that God promised. You can find them here. If you glean carefully, you would see what God has decreed. To Moses and to the people of God. What was for them is for us. We have the same access to the same God who delivered the Israelites will deliver you. Yeah. Notice these three things. He said, I will bring you out. I will rescue you. I will redeem you. And I'll leave you with this. He said, I will bring you out. You can't get out Regardless of whether you were thrown in, slipped in, or jumped in, uh -huh. you can't get out of the power right. of sin on your All own. Right. Come on, come on, come on. And I do mean you. I'm not talking about the person who seems to deal with their pits better than you do. We don't need to deal with our pits. We need to get out of our pits. Psalm 40 and 2 tells me, he lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. I will bring you out. This is God's promise to you right now. I will bring you out. I will keep you safe. Numbers 15 and 41. Declares, I am the Lord God, your God, who brought you out from the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. It is God who can bring us out of this mess we're in as a nation. Yes. It is God who will bring us out of our personal struggles and personal issues. To those of you who have not given your life to Jesus Christ this morning, he's simply saying to you, I still rescue, no matter how bleak. Well, how discouraged you may be, trust me. Mm -hmm. And if you trust me, I will save you. Secondly, I will rescue you. Somebody needs to be rescued this morning. I can reassure you that the old habits of the world cannot rescue you. Mm -hmm. Drinking, carousing, engaging, all kind of illicit relationships. And behavior cannot save you. Jesus says, I'll rescue you. No matter what kind of mess you find yourself in today, this can be your season to be rescued by God. The Lord will bring you out of your captivity. Don't know about you, but I've had some moments where my life was in captivity. But I stand here this morning because he brought me out. He rescued me. Just as he did for the Israelites during the Passover. Well, how will he rescue you? Listen. Exodus 12 and 3. But the blood will mark for you and make for you a sign. The houses where you live, where I see the blood, I will pass over. And no trouble will come upon you to destroy you when I punish the land of Egypt. What is God saying right there is this. If you're covered in the blood, you're covered in the blood, I will rescue you. When the deaf angel came through Egypt, 
He looked for the marker, if you will. We sing it, I know it was the blood. It was the blood that kept the Israelites from dying. And I know it's the blood that keeps you and I from dying. For without the shedding of the blood, there can be no remission of sin. Yeah. God still rescues. Yeah. And finally, I will redeem you. Isn't that exciting? Amen. Isn't that exciting? Amen. God says, I'll redeem you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You might think you're not worth being redeemed, but you are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The enemy will whisper in your ear, you're not worth being redeemed, but God will tell you, you're mine. Amen. Then he says, I've been brought with a price. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Therefore, I'll glorify God. Yes, sir. What was the price? Mm. The price was the blood. It is never over in your life until God says it's over. Psalms 30 and 15 says, His anger lasts only a moment, but his favor a lifetime. Weeping Last through the night. Come on, preacher. But joy mm. comes in the morning. Mm. Wow. I've wondered about the text. We quote it, but I've wondered about it. What are you talking about, God? <laughs> you may find yourself in a situation that's beyond repair, but hold on. Mm. Weeping endure for the night. But God will rescue you in the morning if you hold on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about because the Bible says early the morning of resurrection, the Mary and those with her set out to go to the tomb. But when they got there, the stone was rolled away. My Redeemer my Savior, what you say? What your you say? Savior, yes, sir. God had rolled yes, the stone yes, away. Yes, sir. Why? Because God now has been set in place yes, sir. and launched the rescue plan oh, for all of humanity. Mm -hmm. How did he do it? When he came out of a grave with all power in his hand, God still rescues. Yes, sir. Yes, I know sir. what I'm talking about. Yes, Come here, Thomas. Yes, I won't believe. Come here, boy. Come here. That he's alive until I put my hand in his side and I see the nail prints in his hand. I won't believe. And the Bible says that Jesus appeared in the upper room with them. Thomas, look at my hands. Thomas, look at my side. It is I. Thomas declared, my Lord and my God. God still rescued. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. No matter how long your trial has lasted, I'm convinced that his favor is about to dawn on your life. Do you need the lifeline? I love the old missionary song that we, for some reason, no longer sing. Throw out the lifeline. Mm -hmm. Throw out the lifeline. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm doing this morning. Is throwing out the lifeline. Amen. Amen. You don't have to die in your sins. You don't have to be afraid of death. You don't have to be afraid of the calamity, mm -hmm. the chaos that's going on around us. Because if you set your minds on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father, Amen. He has promised you that I will keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on me. Amen. He has promised that I'll give you peace that surpasses all understanding. He's promised that I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's promised that I'll lead you to the rock that's higher than yourself. He's promised this. If you need Jesus Christ,
to rescue you right now. So I just noticed the other day, the latest report, suicide continues to spiral upward simply because people have lost hope. Mm -hmm. But you can have hope this morning, and that's in Jesus. Put your body heads. I just want you to, you want to rededicate your life. You can just simply say, Father, I've sinned against heaven and earth and against you. Forgive me of my sin and restore me to new life. Give me hope now. Spirit of a living God, breathe fresh upon me. You said that you were married to the backslider. That you care about the lost sheep. That you would leave the 99 and seek for the one. There is one here in this parking lot right now that don't know you personally. And I pray, God, that you would speak ever so gracious and mercifully to their conscience, convicting them of sin and unrighteousness, and shower them with your love and your grace. And, Father, remember the nation in which we are part of. You said if my people, called by your name, would humble themselves, pray and turn from their wicked ways then you will hear from heaven and heal the land our land needs to be healed the hearts of this nation and our leaders need to be healed I pray God that your grace and mercy would be extended to our president and his family for you are not a respecter of persons you love everybody now, Father, as we prepare to take this communion, we pray that you would consecrate the elements of the bread and the cup, the contents symbolic of your shed blood, the wine, that as we receive it, we will be mindful of the great rescue plan that you initiated to save us from our sins. We thank you for this moment in worship. We thank you for a God who is great and greatly to be praised. It is in Jesus' glorious name. Amen. Amen. If you love the Lord this morning, give him a just honk your horn. <laughs>